name that we came up with is Loveify and we turned our project into the Loveify project. We originally came up with the word Loveify because we realized that as a team, in order to really create positive change, you really have to be rooted in love because of the amount of time and patience and persistence and courage that it really takes to actually be an effective change maker. So this is the team that we're cur we currently worked with to put this project together. My name is Jojo. I'm a junior sociology major with a double minor in health studies and African American studies. My name is Zach. I'm a junior business hospitality management major. My name is Evelyn. I'm a senior in pol uh, politics major and a Jewish studies and social justice minor. And my name is Sharif. I am a nursing major, senior, and I also am minoring in gerontology, uh, cultural anthropology, and philosophy. So the goal with our overall Loveify project is to really take over the current punishment systems that are in public schools in the San Francisco Unified School District. We want to go ahead and give students in these communities resources to really understand how their educational experience and the environment that they are being educated in is directly impacted by the social identities that they may hold. We think it is extremely important to implement this kind of resource because it really allows for self-reflection um, versus the immediate criminalization that happens when you have officers um, just patrolling the schools at all times and criminalizing adolescent behavior versus taking it as an opportunity to educate the students on how to grow and really understand how they affect society and also themselves. So this actually, this slide is a slide of our research and in this slide, the picture at the top and the picture of the bottom is an image of Nadia King, who is a six-year-old from Florida, who was taken by police officers to a mental institution and sedated without even speaking to her parents. Um, the actions that took administration to call the police were that she was out of control and throwing chairs. Then we also have Ahmed Muhammad, on the right, he is a 14-year-old boy from Texas who was actually arrested by police officers for bringing a homemade clock inside of a briefcase. Um, administration at his school thought that it was a bomb inside of the briefcase, where really he was just trying to show his engineering teacher what he had actually made. On this slide, we also do present some of our research. So um, Dalton Conley came um, through research. He found that black students had the same socioeconomic, black students who had the same socioeconomic status or wealth status as white students were more likely to graduate high school than their white counterparts. This really shows how important intersectionality is when we're talking about education. Um, and then we also found that in 2014, black students where 9.1% and Latinx students were 6.4% more likely to get suspended than white students. And also black and Latinx students are two times less likely to graduate high school when compared to their white counterparts. Now Sharif is gonna tell you a little bit about restorative justice and where we got our inspiration to implement this type of program. All right, so starting with, I'll define restorative justice. Restorative justice is a transformative practice that allows for people to be more self-reflective in their actions and how they impact the world around them through interdisciplinary processes. Uh, some of our inspirations for where we're getting restorative justice is schools in Oakland, California have implemented restorative justice practices by creating a mindfulness program, which allows folks to really focus on self-esteem and their beliefs about people's intent. They practice community meditation and also work closely to implement restorative justice programs in the Alameda County Juvenile Justice Program. We also do want to play, pay tribute that restorative justice is a tradition learned by natives of very different cultures. Um, I couldn't name all of them if I wanted to, but there, that is the origins. Um, and where we got our most of our research for restorative justice was, was speaking to Alex Lee Lantili, the founder and executive director of Perseverance Prep. She actually is practicing restorative justice in her own middle school and she is doing, she's wearing all the hats. She is the one that goes in, 
goes in and does all the red recess resets and does everything that has to do with restorative justice and she has seen a great impact even if it is her own So how Loveify is going to make it work for us. Um, Loveify wants to put restorative justice in a way where we're going to take um, detention and create an alternative. The way we're going to create an alternative is by recruiting upperclassmen um, in, around citywide. And, you know, we'll do flyers, social clubs, and other forms of advertising to get students of, of colleges around the Bay Area to participate. And after that, they would participate in the peer counseling training, which would contribute with literature to read training and other with psychologists. And they would also do a bunch of racial bias training, simulations and role play. And all that would contribute to them getting certified and being able to go into high schools in the Bay Area and come in and tell their students, hey, we're here for you. We know that you're going through a lot. Let us be your outlet. So now I'm going to be talking about the targeted project participants with the Loveify project. Um, as we've stated before, we want to um, identify the students of color that are part of part of marginalized communities of uh, lower income class. Um, when we were talking to Alex, she had mentioned that when they try to implement programs such as this or something similar uh, into higher education, such as high schools, it can sort of be kind of a lost cause. So which is why we uh, mentioned middle school when we were doing this project because we wanted to kind of try and get this project started from the ground up and um, teach these uh, middle school students um, as they go along throughout their education. We also wanted to include the SF upperclass, um, SF upperclassmen undergraduate and graduate students in the departments of psychology, humanities, and urban studies majors, as well as the middle school and high school administration uh, to act as someone that you know, these young students can uh, confide in during, uh, who face adversity um, as their superior. Now we're gonna be talking about project inspirations, starting with Evelyn. What inspired me to be very passionate about this particular project was that I was actually a peer counselor during my high school career at Immaculate Conception Academy here in the Bay Area. What I saw was very fruitful, interactions after I was peer counseling, it was giving uh, girls and other students an outlet to not have to resort to their friends that might be going through similar issues, but they had a bigger older buddy that could go in, relate, and still advise without being judgmental and being an authoritative figure. My inspiration from this project came from my 13 year old sister who actually has a hard time with the punishment practices that actually happen at her school. Um, so oftentimes she like ha gets in trouble for talking out of turn and not like raising her hand and kind of just out speaking her own opinion. And so one of the one time when my mom had to go into a student council student teacher meeting, she went ahead and put me on FaceTime and during the FaceTime call, the teacher actually called my little, sh my, the teacher said that they were scared of my 13 year old sister, which was something that I found very alarming. And so I asked her like, when you get into like these frustrated moods, like how do you like deal with it? And like, what are the steps that like help you calm down? And when she told me that her only resource was to go to the bathroom and come back when she was ready, um, it was very alarming because at that point, at, as a 13 year old, that is your most vulnerable state to really understand why you're upset, how you deal with your emotions and be aware of your impact on your community and also to yourself. Um, so I thought a program like peer counseling really gave an opportunity for young folks to understand their actions at a different level versus solely getting in trouble for the way they act. So this is the program implementation timeline we wanted to kind of take the time in the year of 2020 to work with the USF psychology department to kind of foster this program and establish it, uh, the peer counseling curriculum. And then in the following year of 2021, we wanted to be able to kind of have the time to find the perfect match for a program um, that would kind of meet our goals and needs. And we would be partnering with the SFUSD to do this. And then in 2022, we would start uh, the recruitment process. 
This is the peer counseling training timeline. In April, we would begin the peer counselor recruitment through uh, flyers, assemblies, um, mentioning it in classes, etc. In May, we would uh, send out the applications and then begin the actual application process with the students for peer counselors. End of May, peer counselors would be chosen. And then in June through August, the peer counselor training would begin. Um, as Evelyn had uh, mentioned to us uh, during our conversation, she had said it had taken up to three to four months at least to kind of um, begin this training process and feel comfortable with what um, is the necessary goals. So in August, we really wanted to uh, have the student and peer counselor introduction to begin at the beginning of the year. So they would have so they could foster this relationship and become comfortable with one another. And then mid-September through mid-May would be the active peer counseling process. And then we just wanted to give a special thanks to the founders, Mr. and Mrs. McGrath, as well as our facilitators, Rich Dylan, Lester, and Bob. And thank you so much. This is the Love of Five Projects.